In this video, we're going to be talking about corporate worship, and we need to reclaim corporate worship. Maybe you don't even know what corporate worship means. You're going to find out in this video. Coming up. Hey, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com, your daily dose of practical worship leading tips. If you want to find those tips, head over to Instagram or Facebook at Leading Worship Well, where I'm posting worship leading tips. I usually say every single day, but if you follow me over there, then you know that I just hit 1,000 posts on Instagram slash Facebook slash my blog, and it's time for something a little bit different. So what is that differentness? Is that a word? Differentness? I don't know. I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on YouTube and some other things that I've got going on in the background for at least a little bit. We'll see how it works out. But I'm still posting on Instagram and Facebook, so go follow me there. I'd love to connect with you. You're here on YouTube, though. So go ahead, hit subscribe down below, and let's get into it, because today we're talking about corporate worship. And I believe that this is so important when it comes to leading worship, is to understand that we aren't just leading worship on a Sunday morning. We're leading corporate worship, and I think that this is an idea that's kind of been swept under the rug in this age of consumerism, if I dare say, or just like leading the person on Sunday. I'll explain more what that means here in a second, but we need to talk about corporate worship. And this is something that I'm passionate about. I know maybe that word, that term corporate worship doesn't have much meaning to you right now. Essentially, it's this. There's a difference between us worshiping together on a Sunday morning and us worshiping personally in our home. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video and how that affects your worship leading. But I just want to hear from you. Maybe you've heard this term corporate worship before. I want to hear how you would describe the difference between personal worship and corporate worship. What are some things that make those two different? Maybe you've never thought about that before. Pause this video. Think about it for a second. Don't just watch this video and consume information. That's not very helpful. I want you to process what you're hearing. Consider what it means to you in your worship leading and in your specific context of where you lead worship. So, how would you describe the difference between personal worship and corporate worship? Let me know in the comments below. Leave a like as you're scrolling down to leave the comment, and I'll talk to you in a second. Wow, that's such a good answer. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I haven't read it yet, but when I read it, I bet I'm going to be thinking that. So I look forward to hearing your definition of personal and corporate worship and how they're the same and how they're different. But let's get into what we're actually talking about in this video, reclaiming corporate worship and what it means for your worship leading. So corporate worship, just worship in general. This is something that I've talked about a lot over on my blog, so go check out leadingworshipwell.com if you haven't checked that out before. There's over now over a thousand posts over there for you to check out. But I talk about this idea of corporate worship. I've written some specific posts on it, but it's also always in the background of everything that I talk about when I talk about leading worship. And this is what I want to start off with. I want to say this. I want to say that, first of all, you aren't just a worship leader on Sunday. You are a corporate worship leader. There's sort of that silent part, right? We are leading corporate worship. That is what we're doing whenever we gather with our church on Sunday. It's corporate worship. And so you got to have that mindset whenever you're leading your church. And if you have the mindset of I'm leading personal worship, we're going to break that down in a second. If you have that mindset of I'm leading personal worship, you're, gonna, you're not going to be leading worship the best that you can possibly be leading. I believe that there's more for us specifically on Sunday mornings. There might be opportunities to lead personal worship outside of a Sunday morning, but I believe on Sunday morning that the main goal is corporate worship, and this is what I want you to understand. Here's the definition of corporate worship, all right? When you hear corporate worship, I've gotten some pushback on that before because I think when people think of the word corporate, they think of corporation or like some big company with rigid rules and expectations and guidelines that you have to follow. All right, that's not what corporate means. That's like what we think it means, but that's not what it means. What the word corporate means simply is together. It means a group of people. So 
when we lead corporate worship, we are leading a group of people. And that causes us to do things in a different way than we would if we were leading, number one, ourselves, or even if we were leading somebody else in a personal time of worship. And like I said, I believe that Sunday mornings are the time for corporate worship, all right? You can, everybody should be having personal worship all throughout the week, all right? You should, whether you're a worship leader or just a church member, your goal is not to just come to church on Sunday and worship then and then not worship at all the rest of the week. And this isn't even a conversation on different ways that you can worship. Worship isn't just singing. It's reading your Bible. It's praying. It's anything that shows God that he is worthy. That's where the word worship comes from. Worship, showing God that he's worthy. But we shouldn't just be having these worship moments at church on Sunday. It is every believer's responsibility to have personal times of worship all throughout the week. So the question then becomes, on Sunday morning, what's the purpose? How is that different than me just having a personal time of worship during the week? And here's the answer. The one thing that makes it different, that makes Sunday morning worship different with our church, as opposed to me in my room on a Friday or a Friday morning, you know, personal worship time. What's the difference? It's that we are together. We are a group of people. We are a group of people gathered together. That is the advantage. That is the purpose of us gathering together on a Sunday morning. And here's the problem that I see and the mindset that I see worship leaders having. And there's sort of two facets of this. It's not understanding that we are gathered corporately together to worship. And so we focus on personal worship, and that takes two avenues. Number one, either we lead ourselves in worship. You know, you make decisions based on yourself as a worship leader, and you think, if I just model what worship looks like, what personal worship looks like, then everybody else is going to follow along, and then they're all going to have their own personal times of worship too, and it's going to be amazing. So what do you do? You focus on yourself, and you think, what songs do I need to sing? What keys make me sound the best that I can possibly sing in? How am I going to connect with God and everybody can watch me connect with God and then they can have their personal worship time? All right, that's the first way. We don't want to just be personally personally worshiping when we're supposed to lead corporate worship. But second of all, most of you hopefully have gotten over that point. And so what's the next logical step? We step into our worship leading and we think, okay, my responsibility is to lead this person in worship. This person, I want them to connect with God. I want them to have a personal time of worship during our Sunday mornings. If I can do that and I can be playing a song and I look out and I see everybody with their eyes closed, their hands raised, they're not focused on anything but God, then I've done my job. And this might sound crazy, but that's not your job on a Sunday morning. On a Sunday morning, our job is to lead people in corporate worship, togetherness, all right? The power and the purpose of Sunday morning gatherings is not for all to come together and have our own personal worship experiences sitting beside each other in the same room. Our purpose on Sunday morning is to come and worship together. That's what the Bible shows us. So I hope that makes sense. That's my understanding of what we are to be doing on a Sunday morning. And when you have that understanding, that makes you make changes in how you prepare. If you're preparing for to lead people in personal worship moments, then you prepare one way. But if you're doing it in a way that leads everybody together, understanding that we aren't just having our own personal worship experiences, but we're worshiping corporately together, then you prepare differently for that. And so I want you to start thinking about what moments did I facilitate in my worship service last Sunday? Think back to last Sunday. Just think for a second. What moments did you set up? Were they all, hey, I want you to go to God and do this. Just you and him. Just you and him. There's no one else here. 
I, I think some of those moments are okay, but all too often I see worship leaders leading worshipers in their church in personal worship experiences on Sunday mornings and never in corporate worship experiences. So focus on corporate worship, focus on leading people as a group, we are in this together. And in the rest of this video, maybe you're like, okay, I need to do that, but how do I do it? Well, I wanna share with you three ways, three practical ways that you can actually implement this idea of corporate worship, which is the purpose of our Sunday gatherings, how you can actually implement that, facilitate it, perpetuate it, any other word that makes me sound smart in your church. So here are three ways to do it. The first is this evaluate your song list. Think back, line up your set list for the last four months that you've already have planned, you've already done in your church, and take a look at the language of them. I talked about this in this video right here about planning worship set lists. There's something that I call the I, we, God balance, where some songs use I language, that's personal worship. Some songs use we language, that's corporate language. Some songs use God language, which I think can be either. But what's, what diet of songs have you fed your church this past month? Because I see a lot of worship songs that are personal worship songs, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I think those are important. But it's hard, it's kind of hard to find corporate worship songs. I mean, look for a worship song that uses the word we. See if you can find it. And if you have some of those songs, leave them in the comments below because I'm looking for more of those songs. But have you been teaching your church about we on your Sunday gatherings? Or is it always, hey, we're gonna sing this song, it's about you and God, so focus on you and God. That's not why we're there on a Sunday morning. We can do that at home. You can listen to that song on the radio, right? Our job on Sunday morning is not to facilitate personal worship experiences. It's to facilitate a corporate worship experience. So think about the songs that you're singing. I'm not saying that you can't ever have a personal worship song, but I think the majority of songs that we should be singing should have we, like we should be talking about us. And maybe you need to work a little bit harder in your speaking transitions to communicate that idea and maybe a song uses the pronouns i and you're talking about i but you tie it into we're all in this together like we're singing this together because we believe this together i think of the song what's it called the creed by hillsong i believe in god the father i believe in christ the son i believe in the holy spirit our god is three in one like that is a corporate worship song we are proclaiming the foundation of our faith together. So facilitate more of those moments by looking at your song list and picking songs that reinforce this idea of corporate worship. Number two, incorporate corporate worship ideas and language into your regular vocabulary whenever you're leading worship. So what's that look like practically? Well, I want you to take stock of your last worship speaking transition. Think back to this past Sunday or maybe the Sunday before that. Think about your worship speaking transition. What did it sound like? What kind of language did you use? Did it sound like this? Hey, thank you for coming to church today. I just want you to find your own space. Get comfortable. These moments before us are between you and God. Just cast your cares at his feet. Just focus on God. It's just you and him this morning. Let's worship together. Did it sound like that? Which I exaggerated a little bit, but hopefully you can see the personal nature of leading that moment. So that's a personal worship moment. I'm not saying that those are bad. I'm just saying that we shouldn't use them all the time at the cost of never having a corporate worship moment. Or did your worship speaking transition sound like this? Hey, good morning, welcome to church. It's good for us to gather together. I wanna to remind you that we are in this together and these words that we are about to sing are words for us. These are words that we believe as a church and we've seen God's faithfulness in our own lives. We've seen God's faithfulness in our church and we're going to continue to see God's faithfulness over and over and over again. So this is what we share in common. We share in common the hope that we have in Jesus and God's faithfulness. So let's believe and proclaim this song together. Something like that. Like now we have drawn people in, we've shown them that there is unity in what we believe. We've shown them that we are in this together. So just think about your 
language, what kind of language do you usually use whenever you're leading worship? Is it always I, me, you and God, or is it us, we? We're in this together. This is what we believe. This is why we sing. This is where, this is how we relate to each other. Think about your language. And finally, number three is to lead people in corporate worship moments. All right, people don't, I don't think people typically have this understanding of gathering together as a church on Sunday. Maybe you haven't thought about it before. And you're, if you haven't thought about it before, your church probably isn't going to have thought about it before. So you need to teach them this concept of corporate worship, that we are doing this together, that our responsibility on Sunday morning as a just a church goer is to not just have our own personal times of worship. It's to worship together. And so you need to teach them that. You need to lead them through some moments. So just one super practical example of how to do that. I think of the song, The Blessing. And there's two ways that you can lead that song. The first is personal worship. Hey, I want you to just receive these words as we worship together. This is a blessing for you. So receive this blessing this morning. And then you say, may your favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. You know how the song goes. And people would be like, yes, I've received a blessing at church today. And this is for me. That's one way to lead it. Not always wrong but here's a way to lead it corporately. You say, hey, we're about to sing the song, The Blessing. We're gonna sing these lines. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and your family and their children and their children, whatever the lyrics are. And you say, we're gonna sing those, but I don't want you to receive those for yourself today, at least not initially. I want you to sing those words over your fellow church members over the other people in this church. You know, we have a responsibility when we gather together, not just to have an individual personal worship experience with us and God. We can do that anytime throughout the week. Our responsibility in these moments is actually to each other. And when we all take care of each other, everybody gets everything that they need. So you will receive a blessing during this time as we bless each other. But I want you to focus on blessing that person sitting in front of you or maybe that person over there that you don't get along with all the time here at church. I want you to bless them because we are a church family. We are in this together. So let's sing these words over each other as we continue to worship God. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. See how that's such a different moment? I believe that that is the purpose of our Sunday mornings is to corporately worship together. There it is reclaiming corporate worship. Have you thought about it before? That we aren't just gathered together on Sunday morning to have our own individual personal times of worship, but the power and the purpose of Sunday morning is that we would worship together. Think about not just what I mentioned today about your song choices and your worship leading vocabulary and facilitating those moments in worship, not just how that impacts your Sunday morning gatherings, but allow this idea of corporate worship to infiltrate every area of your worship planning. And you're going to see so much fruit from it because that's what people want. People want community in church. They just don't always know how to experience it. And for us to consistently only facilitate personal worship moments during our Sunday gatherings, that doesn't facilitate community. That doesn't show community in church. So we want to facilitate these moments of corporate worship where we are worshiping together. That's one way that you can improve your worship leading to just have that mindset change. If you're looking for some other more practical ways to improve your worship leading, I put together a free training. There's a link down to it in the description below called five tips to instantly improve your worship leading. All right, this was a big concept today in this training that I wanna share with you. It's just five simple tips that you just gotta know them. And if you do them, they will improve your worship leading. They're super simple. You just gotta make the decision to do them. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me for this longer than normal conversation today. Until I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.